right, welcome in to another episode of the Goodman and Hummel podcast. I'm Jeff Goodman. He is Rob Hummel, and you look pretty good for somebody that that was on your grind this past weekend, Rob. I mean, this was a double header. It, it probably brought you back to your AAU days when you had to actually um, play <laughs> hard. multiple games. Yeah, work a little bit, you know. <laughs> Yeah, the old two games in a day down at the Milk House at uh, at Disney, right? That's what that was like. But you were young then. Now you're. I was. I was. You know what? I just want you to clip this and remember this in July when all you do is trash me for not doing anything. Um, that I do actually sometimes have to work, and unlike, look at you in South Carolina with a beautiful chef's kitchen behind you, yeah. eating Twizzlers. Oh. Like the fat boy that you are. <laughs> and, you know, your tweet. Okay, first of all, for anyone that didn't see it, Jeff sent this really stupid-ass tweet about my list of demands that I made on my ride down to... Do you have, um, the, do you have the tweet there of the demands that you made? I, I could pull it up. Uh, let, me, let me find let, it. Let's find the but this But this tweet made. that you tweeted has been beneficial for me. This was a And good I look source. forward to saying why. This was a good source. I'm going to read it. I have it here. This was a okay. source that told me the demands that you made to go from uh, Rutgers to the Palestra. Okay, you were you you had the Rutgers game in the afternoon, then you had the big Purdue Penn State game at the Palestra. Now, a source told me that this was this was your list of demands to be able to do both games. The temperature in the limo set exactly at 70 degrees for the entire ride. Pillows and blankets. Uh, I'm told it might have even been your your childhood blankie that you wanted delivered for the for the drive. Champagne, Cool Ranch Doritos, and then two bags of Twizzlers. I don't know if they were the family size or or just the regular size bag here. But... All right, so that that tweet was dumb in itself. But then some random guy who follows you said, "What what did he say? Can you find his tweet off of what? It was something about how there's he's never seen anyone on television." Who I think that guy eats two bags of Twizzlers than me. <laughs> yeah, he did. Which, That's right. Which I've thanks never a lot looked, for that wait, guy. Wait, here it is. Here it is. Tom Wyatt. I've thanks, never Tom. looked at a guy and thought he definitely eats Twizzlers faster than Hummel. What what makes me look like I eat Twizzlers fast? Like what what gives that away? Is it is it I'm fat? Or I I, I don't you just understand. have that look about you. I just have a look of when yeah. you look at me, you say, Man, that dude crushes some Twizzlers. Mm, <laughs> man, he just goes in. But the the real win of this story, yeah, outside of getting to call two really good Big Ten games in one day, which was a, a great time, and my first time to the Palestra, which was very cool, yeah. was the fact that Brian Cardinal texted me from Purdue, um, like a day or two after, and said, "Hey, I, I've got a uh, a family friend who's they're they're a Purdue family, and um, one of their daughters is a like, vice president at at Hershey's." And apparently Hershey's makes Twizzlers okay. and she wants to, to get in contact with it. Do you mind if I give her your number? So I was like, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Sure. So, so she reaches out to me and she was like, you know, thank you so much for, for driving some of the, uh, the conversation to Twizzlers on social media, even though I didn't actually tweet anything you're dumbass did. And then Tom, made it sound like I'm the greatest Twizzler eater in the history of the planet. So they said they wanted to send me a care package. So I'm getting all this candy from Hershey's sent my way, apparently. So so thank you for that. Uh, maybe so, maybe NIL will be coming my way from Hershey's here. Just for, so uh, you NIL. know, just so you know, uh, marketing agents get 20% on all deals. No, 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 no. you're not getting NIL shit. Deals. You're not getting shit. You already, you already make me come on this show once a week. <laughs> That's That is your commission. My presence here on the Goodman and Hummel pod is your commission. Maybe you can get a Doritos. Do you like Doritos too? Maybe they'll reach out. I mean, I'll yeah, I'll take whatever I'll I take can get. Anything. I, I, I mean, let's know, face I'm, it. I'm late to the NIL party. I didn't get it as a player, so now I'm really trying to get it as an announcer. All right. Well, let me know when the box of Twizzlers comes in. I'm, I'm, yes, I will. You'll you'll I'm receive once, a picture, the care package I'm about to receive. I, I'm actually a big Twizzlers guy. I didn't get yeah, I can the, see that. Yeah, I can no, see that. I love them. Love them. I made the whole rest of the well, well, Tom, if you're listening, it looks like Jeff's the guy that can house Twizzlers faster than any any man on the planet. Not I me. I did at a Providence game once. Somebody took a picture of me eating a bag of Twizzlers. I polished them off. Honestly, how proud of you? For the 16. 
Before how how proud were you? I was how proud were you of that photo? How proud were you of that photo Whatever. of you just crushing Listen, Twizzlers? Can't be any worse than how I look right now down here in Charleston. <laughs> All right, let's get to some business here. Um, what do you want to start with? I'm going to give you your choice. You have two options. We can start with Kentucky and the shit show that, that it is right now with John Calipari and Big Blue Nation. Or yeah. you could talk about Indiana. Who's in worse shape? That that is down there in Bloomington right yeah. now. Yeah, who who do you think is in a worse place right now? Well, I mean I guess I guess Kentucky because Indiana at least has injuries that they right. Right. are definitely suffering from and have been suffering from. And and the other part is it's year two of the Mike Woodson. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt. The expectations Kentucky's in a worse so place. high. Yeah, they're so high at so let let's let's start with Kentucky. Let's start with Kentucky go. and then we'll move on to Indiana. Um Cal hasn't been to the – he hasn't won a tournament game. And I think – let me let me pull it up. It's 1,385 days now. That was the last time. Now, the, the tournament was obviously canceled in in, in uh, 2020. But I'm, I'm it, trying to th- just refresh my memory. I know last year they lost to St. Peter's. Two years ago, they were terrible. They didn't make the They didn't make, didn't the, make tournament. the tournament. That's Remember, right. Remember, that, okay. was, that was the kind of pandemic. The cut, they were 9-6. and six yeah, yeah, yeah. They stunk. Okay. And then this year – they're one in three in the SEC for the first time since 1986-87, Rob. Mm-hmm. So the natives are getting restless because Big Blue Nation, you know, they're tired of getting all these players. And I think it kind of started years ago in a sense. I mean, they were so good early, right? He went to, I think it was like, you know, four four times that he got to the Final Four in the first six years or something like that. It was their, their team with Anthony Davis, the one at all, was unbelievable. The and, talent and really, on that team is crazy. He picked up – I mean, again, he took over for Billy Clyde, and he brought all those dudes there. So, from day one, it was like John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, Eric Bledsoe. They had dudes from day one. Yeah. And, and then I feel like it fell off a little bit, and, and, and people started to get upset when he – remember the comment basically he made was like, you know, getting players to the league was more important than winning. They didn't like that. They did not. <laughs> they didn't like that, that I can tell you. Right. Because, yeah, well, they want talent. On that note, you told me an incredible stat about how many NBA players that Kentucky has had since, what, 2015? 2016? And yes. that's the Final After Four? After the 2015 season, which is their last Final Four, they have had, what did I say, eight? 18, 18, 18, 18 NBA players, 18 NBA players. You know how many Bill Self said? Probably like six, nine, seven, nine. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, and he's had double the amount of, of top 50 players as Bill Self as well. Um, I mean, Bill that, Self has proven that he can win with, he can with lesser talent. That dude is, a, coach. is an unbelievable basketball coach. There's no denying. I, so let let me give you kind of my thoughts on this, of why it's fallen off on, on Cal a little bit. And you can push back on me if you want. But I think there's a couple things at play here from talking to people close to Cal. One of which is, and this isn't even talking to anybody close to Cal, he had a guy named John Robick for years. John Robick was assistant back at UMass days. He was a head coach for a little while in the, in the uh, I think at Youngstown State, came back, and he was his X's and O's guy. And John um has dealt with some personal issues over the last few years and is no longer on staff and i think that has really really hurt cal because i don't think cal and barbie was there too and and he was kind of his x's and o's guy for a while and he's gone now he, he's back as an as a head coach uh in the mac at one of those directional michigan schools i can't get them all straight so I can't remember. I think it was Western. Where did, where did dig deep in your research? It might be Central. It's either Central or Western because I know. It's I know not Amani's Western because. No, it's not Western because that's Dwayne Stevens from Michigan. So then it is Central Michigan. It's Central. Anyway, Cal now is being exposed to some degree as an average X's and O's guy. Um, you know, he's got three guys in the staff that are that are really good. Um, Orlando Antigua. Um was a former head coach at South Florida. He didn't do well down there. Chin Coleman came over from Illinois. Uh, KT Turner came over this year as an assistant. Uh, I, I just don't know if uh, Cal is, is listening to those guys, relying on them enough. I don't know who's coaching the team. But, again, I think the, the loss of John Robick has really caught up with John Calipari from an X's and O's standpoint. That's one. 
Number two, I think coming out of the pandemic, I don't think Cal's had the same uh, work ethic that he once did. I think recruiting you know, or, or where recruiting probably everything a little, doesn't bit, he have the number one class in the country coming in next year? He though? does. He does next year, but it's, it's well, all I'm saying is he, he might, one of them was hand fed to him, which is DJ Wagner, right? Like yeah. all he had to do really was beat out Kenny Payne. In okay. Louisville. But still he's got the number one player in the class. That's... He does. But, but again, that was given to him by Dewan Wagner, who he coached at, at Memphis. Like yeah. that, that was like handed to him. Spoon fed. Okay. Like he still deserves credit for it. He's got the number one class in the country next year. Wow. I, so it's not just recruiting. I'm told it's everything. It's everything that, you know, prior to the pandemic, he just knew one way. Grind, grind, grind. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. And then everybody in the pandemic, it changed everything. No, I mean, I mean life came to a halt. Yeah. From a recruiting standpoint, it was like, all right, you don't have to travel as much. From a work standpoint, it was like, all right, this is kind of nice, right? Like, I don't, I don't have to go at the same hundred miles an hour. I can figure out different ways now. And I think he, he enjoys that. I, I honestly think it's, it's something where it's like, all right, I've earned it. I'm 63 years old. I'm in my sixties now. I'm not going to work like I did in my forties or maybe even fifties. Yeah. And I think that has, I don't know if caught up with them is the right word, but it, it's changed. It's changed kind of the way he works. And um, again, like when you looked at this team before the season, Rob, didn't you think like, all right, they got a chance. They got shooters. They got the best big men in the country. They got everything. They had everything. Two point guards, a pro in Case and Wallace, maybe not as many pros. That's the one difference, right? This Kentucky team doesn't have the number of pros that they're accustomed to having. That, that's totally fair. But I, I still think that it, it doesn't, it doesn't add up when you look at their talent and then you look at their on-court performance, especially offensively. I, I just think that watching their offense, it's like watching a team from 15 years ago. Um, it, and if you have good shooters, but you don't get them good shots, that, that doesn't necessarily matter. They went three of 10 from three in the loss to South Carolina. What what good team now is taking 10 threes? And Indiana's dealt with this some too. Yeah, you know, both of these yeah, teams yeah. are similar that like they just, they cannot shoot from the perimeter but you have um, CJ Frederick, who, oh, by the way, shot 46. But you have to get him looks. Right. You you can't just be like, okay, yeah, yes, he's a good shooter. Right. If you play him in horse, he's going to make everything he takes. <laughs> right. But right. if he's taking contested threes, which if you're not generating good looks, I, I just, that doesn't matter. He needs to be open. He needs somebody else to, to get him the ball in a place where he can use the skill that he has. So what do, what do you do? I, I I wrote a story uh, yesterday about that, and I and I talked to um, I talked to a couple coaches that have played Kentucky so far this year, and and one of them I'll give you a couple of the quotes. I know you don't you were you were really busy, so you didn't read it because you've been you know I don't read any of your stuff. Yeah, well I don't blame you. He said, <laughs> "Here's one quote: I think he's lost the players. Their offense is so shitty. He doesn't run anything for their guards. He has no idea how to use Case and Wallace." I mean, it's hard to words. argue with that. No, 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 I, I, I don't, I don't argue with right. that. But you asked, what should they do? Yeah, there, there's still no debating that if you have the number one class in the in the country, that's there's not many people that that or many universities that have that type of Talent. recruiting ability. Right. You, you lost. To I South think Carolina. if I'm if I'm Mitch Barnhart, I'm going to Cal, and I'm saying the staff needs we we need an X and O offensive guy. Whether it's John Beeline, not that I'm saying that he'd come, but somebody of that ability to where, all right, you're getting an offensive coordinator. Like, we know that you can win here. You have one here. Yeah, if you're staying. The, right. buyout, the buyout is insane. We're not – I, well, I here's wouldn't – Here's the buyout, Rob, just so, so we're on the same page with this. All right, so here's the buyout. The buyout is he's got six years left, okay, and they would owe him 75% of his remaining salary, which is about $40 million after this year. Okay. So it's not as bad as like the Jimbo Fisher buyout. Not even, not close because there's yeah. also an offset. So if Cal gets hired by, let's say Texas, just for argument's sake, if he gets hired by Texas and they sign him to a, I mean, what's going to happen? He's not going to go for, even with the offset, he's not going to go for like 
you know, two million, they could maybe backload it and try to figure out a way. But let, let's say for argument's sake, he goes to Texas for a six year deal at 5 million a year, which is $30 million. Well, then there's an offset and they're only going to owe him, you know, I don't want to say minimal money, but it's not close to the four. Yeah, not million. nearly as, as catastrophic as it seems. So to me, I, if I was Mitch saying, Barnhart, I would I would do the we need an offensive coordinator. We cannot continue to run offense like this. You've proven you can win. We know you can recruit. You've got a great class coming in, but we've got to run some different stuff. We yeah. we have got to have somebody come in here and overhaul the offense. I, I agree. I, I mean, I would have already said let's let's hire John. John Beeline's a consultant right now for the Pistons. Uh, I don't know how much he's working for the Pistons, but uh, to I had me, heard he, he works out their young guys a lot. Does he? That's what I, I not, that might not, but I had heard that. Yes. But you could, I'm sure you could get him down there if Cal really wanted him, but he, he's, he's a guy that you would say. Absolutely. But I think it might even need to be more than just a consultant. Right. We need an assistant on staff yeah. who is I'm known for, as a I'm guy that right can, now. I'm no, talking no, no. right yeah. now getting beeline down there. Like, but tomorrow. that's also going to take John Calipari to, to swallow some of his pride there and say, all right, you're right. We do have a problem. Yep. And I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't either, but I, I, I kind of like your deal. I mean, I said they probably, it's probably run its course 14 years and, and both sides might be ready to move on for, for yeah. a fresh but, start. It, but isn't the coordinator thing a win for, for totally. all totally. sides in the sense yes. that, okay, this yep. guy has won a national title. This guy has gotten us to Final Fours, and he's gotten us pros. Yeah. The talent's not been the issue. It's how the talent's being used. I love that idea, Rob. I actually, I, I think that's a better idea. Because if, let's face it, if, if you do, uh, if you fire him now, you lose that number one class. And I wrote, okay, listen, I don't love how Robert Dillingham and DJ Wagner fit together. I've, I've been on the record saying that again. To, again, guys that are high volume guys aren't great shooters. Uh, they have they have the kid Edwards coming in who's a talented, talented wing, uh, and they got the best big man in the country maybe uh, coming in up front. He's he's long, so they have all the talent again. Um, I do think if you fired him and brought in whether it's like a Nate Oates or a Musselman or Bruce Pearl, they'd get dudes immediately. No, they they would they would. Right. Why do you think teams like Kentucky and Indiana have? maybe recruited more to and Kentucky, definitely Indiana, maybe some recruited more. So to, I want to say rankings opposed to production. I mean, the shooting on both these teams is just abysmal. Yeah. Abysmal. And then you look at other teams and Purdue is a great example, lesser ranked guys, but shot makers. I I don't a lot of those shot makers. Right. A lot of those one dimensional now Grady Dick being like an exception, right? Because, but he's not a one dimensional shooter. He's he's got we didn't know that. Well. I'll tell you what, I saw him two summers ago and he looked like a one dimensional shooter. But Jeff, if if you can shoot, yeah. then you can do other things because defenses have to close out to you, shot fake, one dribble pull up, shot fake to the rim. If I have a skill set and I can shoot, yeah. then I can really play as long as I'm at least a decent athlete. You gotta I, be an average defender. No, I, I agree. But like, okay, if you're recruiting some of these classes and you've got five, four guys committed, yep. they're all top 40 players, they're all incredible athletes, get to the basket, high volume scores. Yep. That doesn't make sense in a fit together method Agreed. to me. Yes, it looks good on paper when you have four guys in the top 50. Why not take two guys who are more volume or big time athletes and pair that with the best shooter in the class? I've, I said that about Kentucky's class, their number one class. But Again, Indiana Bellingham, as well. I, I don't understand. Wagner both need the ball in their hands. Now, maybe they'll prove me wrong, and they can coexist, and they're awesome together. All I know is if the PGM, neither one could make a shot from beyond the arc. <laughs> Dillingham's supposedly a better shooter. Um, I just – maybe I caught him in a bad week, okay? But, but, but still, my point is, wouldn't you rather have a class that maybe isn't number one? Yes. Maybe it's more of number 20, and you've got, okay, a kid that's 140 – elite shooter you've got a kid that's 20 big time athlete get to the basket volume score i just feel like some of the ways that these classes are getting put together don't make any sense and the lack of shooting in an era where shooting is the most important thing now granted you got to create you have cj frederick and it feels like he's never open because they don't run stuff for him and he's not getting the ball they did add two really good shooters cj i know but this is all connected it's the scheme but it's also, and it again, yes, they do have two guys that can shoot on this team. Proven. 
in Antonio Reeves and CJ Frederick, but I, I still don't understand some of the recruiting deals of this, where it's like, man, this, this, this does not fit well, it's together. It's taken to forever for Cal to get shooters, right? Like he finally got yeah. two shooters in CJ Frederick and Antonio Reeves, but it's almost like he has no idea how well, to use he, Well, think about, think about the 2012 team. They weren't lighting up from three. They never have. But the game has changed. Right. The game has right. changed to where now yes. the teams that win are teams that make a lot of threes. That's the way that basketball has gone. So, all right. I, I, I'm i glad we had this conversation because, you know, I was torn on Cal. Because I've actually defended Cal for the last year or so and saying these people are idiots for saying that he should be fired. Right. And now I'm just like – you know what has it has it just kind of again if they mutually do it i'm with you but i don't think that that's the best case scenario for kentucky the best case scenario to me is you hang on to cal you hang on to the number one recruiting class and you bring somebody in to completely overhaul the offense next year if he's willing to give that up which who knows um all right next we'll go indiana yeah we're gonna indiana. go to indiana and um my poor daughter man my poor daughter. She gets here. She's so excited about Indiana basketball. Everybody is, you know. They're they're the de facto Big Ten preseason favorite, despite the fact and, and it's a little bit not to the same level at Carolina, obviously, last year, because Carolina went all the way to the title game. Yeah, it's not the same. No, it's not. I'm not <laughs> I'm not, not I'm not saying it's the same, but I'm saying it's it's these guys hadn't really done anything. That's the right? thing. They, they lost by 40 points to, to St. Mary's in the NCAA tournament. And they're granted, both. their travel was horrific. They, they, that's not a situation that you're being set up to win. But they barely got in the tournament. They barely made the tournament. Right. They had to beat exactly. Michigan and Illinois just to get in. And yeah. the whole mantra of Indiana basketball changed based on those two games. And really, was it justified? I don't know. All right. Here, here's my take, Rob. Here's my injuries. Take. Before you start, injuries I, have played a big part. That's where I was going. This. That's where I was going first to set it up. Indiana has lost three straight games. The the one that I think is going to be the killer for multiple reasons here is the Iowa game because they had that 10 minutes in the game. They are they 20 points. They're 21. Crushing Iowa at Iowa. Crushing them. And then race gets hurt. And, and, and know you know what? I'm... That's that's a tough deal because when you have a player who has a serious injury, it can shell shock your group. And they, they look shell shocked after that. that they that's, did, and that's they've already lost Xavier Johnson for potentially the season. They missed Huchafino's been in and out with the back thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I here here's what I will say: with Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit you got new year's goals and hello fresh is here to help you achieve them skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your doorstep with hello fresh eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious they've got 35 weekly recipes uh, they have the options all the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins or adding protein to a veggie dish. Uh, I've got it. I got it back in, in Newburyport. I got it coming to me here in Charleston right now. And I absolutely love it because honestly, it, it's so easy. Uh, everything's right there for you. All the ingredients, all the instructions, uh, all you have to do is, is uh, put it together pretty quickly and easy and i'm not a huge uh, guy when it comes to cooking but uh, even my wife said uh she really likes it so um honestly go to hellofresh.com slash 21 field 68 and use that code 21 field 68 for 21 free meals plus free shipping again go to hellofresh.com slash 21 field 68 use that code Again, 21 Field 68 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. To Indiana fans watching, Trace Jackson Davis is really, really hurt. Really yeah. hurt. Really gutting it out. A lot you see of see the guys, way he runs. I mean, the way he's running, he doesn't look right. He's not healthy. He's not yeah. he's not healthy. And and this kid deserves a ton of credit because a lot of guys in his position right now, Rob, 
with with nil and the draft stock they'd be out they'd say you know what there's no way i'm going out here but i give him credit he's trying to trying to win games trying to help his team get on track trying to get to the back to the ncaa tournament um so trace is hurt xavier johnson is out race thompson is out jalen huchifino has been hurt there's a lot of stuff going on here with Indiana that people probably aren't giving them enough leeway. Uh, they're not going to win the Big Ten. We know that. But I told my daughter, I'm like, they just got to get to the tournament. That's yeah, all. that that would be definitely. I agree with you 100%. Injuries have decimated their team. But that doesn't excuse the lack of execution defensive game plan wise. I mean, they gave up 84 points to Northwestern. Yeah. And Northwestern has had a, a very good season. They had a tough loss last night. They are a defensive team. Their offensive efficiency going into last night's game was 162nd in college basketball. And they give up 84 points to him. But to start the game, you know, Robbie Barron had really struggled. He's been very up and down in his time in Evanston. First play of the game, simple back screen. No one opens up, layup. He goes for 13. Like, you give this guy, you get his head up, He's on scholarship. Right. He's a top 75 player coming out of high school. He's got ability. I mean, you give up a wide open layup, and now all of a sudden he makes two threes, right? The containing of the bounce. Boo-booey. I mean, they, they just could not keep him in front. You look at the ball screen stuff. Total breakdowns in their ball screen defense. Last night against Penn State, they shoot more threes than anybody in the league. Penn State is trying to not turn it over, and they are trying to go bombs away from three. That, that is Micah Shrewsbury's recipe to win. They give up 18 three-pointers. 18. Sure. Seth Lundy makes 12. Andrew Funk, or Seth Lundy makes seven. Andrew Funk makes seven. Th- that is, I mean, just the, the execution of the game plan. And, and I was listening to Mike Woodson's press conference on the drive home from Evanston last night. And he, he said, we had a good game plan. Well, that tells me that if you think your game plan was good, then your players did an absolutely horrific job of executing it. Right. Because That's 18 threes in a game right. is is terrible. Th- th- that that cannot happen. And I agree that there's injuries, but still the carryover from what they are working on from a scouting report standpoint, taking it to the game ha- has been abysmal. And, and that needs to be something where, all right, we might lose, but we're going to execute the way that we want to execute. And they're not doing that right now. As you know, I was not the most complimentary when they hired Mike Woodson. Okay. Um, 63 years old, came over, had never coached in college. Okay. That's hard to do. And I'll I'll go back to the same thing I've said over and over. It's not personal on Mike Woodson, Patrick Ewan, Chris Mullen, Fred Hoiberg 2.0, Aaron McKee, Jerry Stackhouse. Penny Hardaway. I mean, I know people are going to try to say Penny Hardaway. Penny Hardaway has been to one tournament in four years at Memphis. That's not good. That's not good. And he, right now they're on the bubble. They just lost to UCF. They lost to Tulane last week. Uh, Juwan Howard, you know, is the one guy you kind of, a year ago, you were like, all right, he's the guy. Yeah. Uh, they're not great right now. Hubert Davis, he was the guy. And Hubert, Hubert you know, made the national, different. but Hubert Davis made the national title game last year. That, and that, Hubert Davis is different too. Cause he was like 10, eight years on the bench with Roy Williams. Yeah. So a little bit different when you grinded it out for a while uh, as an assistant, at least uh, before, but some of these guys, man, they just, again, I don't want to paint a broad brush, but I'm going to here. They come in and they don't understand how much time and work, especially to rebuild. You know, it's one thing Juwan Howard takes over for, for John Beeline and the brand's strong at Michigan. The culture's strong. He he takes over a good job. It's those like Chris Mullen at St. John's when it's not good. But that or, was like, I felt like Chris Mullen at St. John was a Hail Mary. Th- yeah. This has declined. Yes. And you know what? Maybe the, here's the, the pass. Yeah. Maybe the best player that we've ever had will save us. You know, right. like that, that to so me stupid. is what that was. So dumb. You miss on yeah. guys and you're like, okay, you know, same thing with Georgetown. All right, we missed on a couple guys. All right, let's go go get Patrick. Yeah. And instead of like, all right, Patrick, like we'll hire you, but you better have an unbelievable staff. And and yeah. that's what Hoiberg had 1.0. Hoiberg at Iowa State had an unbelievable staff. He had TJ Otzelberger. 
you know, he, he's, he kept TJ from uh, Greg McDermott's staff. So I think part of it is that, I mean, but, but again, going back to Indiana. But the, just, the knock on Mike Woodson was, well, how's he going to recruit? He's never recruited. That hasn't been the issue. Huchafino's a beast. He's right. probably an NBA player after this season. Oh, totally. Um, totally. Malik Renu is talented. He he maybe hasn't – he's had to play behind Race and Trace, and now he's getting a bigger opportunity. Um, he's been inconsistent, but he has a lot of ability. You know, Malik Renu is going to be a good player. And they've got um, good, like, Pete, like Tamar Bates and Jordan Geronimo, and some of these dudes are, like, good, good – not stars, but, but Jordan Geronimo makes a lot of mistakes out there. He yeah. he, he yep. he's a very good athlete. Yep. Um. He he sometimes defensively it looks like he has no idea what's going on. But you watch the last couple of games. I think their whole team looks like they have no idea what's going on defensively. I I, I don't know on offense. It's tough for Trace because he's getting loaded up on. They're daring them to shoot threes. They were four of fourteen last night. They don't make a lot. They don't take a lot. I just and then defensively, this is a, that was a strength last year, and with the injuries, it's it's really regressed. Um, Listen, Calipari went out and added shooters. Mike Woodson did not. That's a yeah. Game. I mean, he he thought that Miller Cop is a shooter, and Tamar a Bates is a, is a shooter. That's what he was looking at. I'm sure CJ yeah. Gunn is known as a shooter, but he, he, he doesn't play a whole lot. But right, right. I mean, you needed a you needed to go in the portal. You know, they they needed like guy. they needed Connor Asijan. Right. I mean, Connor Asijan at Wisconsin would be great on this team. Moves off the ball, shoots it. Look at a guy like Cam Spencer. Right. right. Cam Spencer is awesome at awesome. Rutgers. Second game winning shot last and night. Tough as on the road, guard, second in the Big Ten steals. They they need they needed a guy like that. Yeah. But I, I still think though they, they just they break down on so much action. Their their but defense they, is is soft. What what is this is a successful season? Like I said, is it just yeah it gets making the, the NCAA tournament would be successful yeah. at this point with the injuries. Now Indiana's fan base is not going to take that, and and the fact that you've got fans and players now sparring on social media is that, that right? That, yeah, you didn't see that the uh, yeah <laughs> yeah Miller shocking. Cobb shocking. Uh, it was yeah, but it was other guys too. You know, it was really? it was a a meme was posted by an Indiana fan account about it was that stupid pyramid of i get my hopes up and then my hopes come crashing down and i start to believe hopes up and then an iu logo in it and it was like this is our season and you know i mean when you think about it indiana has beat none of the marquee opponents they played besides xavier that win has gotten better and better that um, was they good. lost at Rutgers. yeah they got beat by arizona in a, a fairly close game they got dumped no, trucked to kansas close. that was i mean six six points they had opportunities point game. but i i thought that in the arizona game every time they made a run arizona just answered that right. that call I, I thought i thought arizona played really really well in the game and i thought indiana did some good things but arizona was just better yeah. kansas was horrific and then the iowa loss like you said i think they'll look back on that and say man that, that just that hurts because they're, they're scheduled now. Wisconsin at home. We'll see if Tyler Wall plays. Yep. Illinois on the road. They're playing better. That's a massive game. Michigan State at home. You get a reprieve with Minnesota away. And then it's Ohio State at home, Maryland away, Purdue at home, Rutgers at home at Michigan. I mean, I mean, it's just. And if Trace isn't healthy. And it just gets worse and worse. I mean, yeah, at Northwestern, hey, Robert, Illinois, Robert, Michigan State, Purdue. What do you do with Trace? I mean, to me, at some point, you might have to shut him down. And if you shut him down two weeks without yeah. trace, your season could be over. Oh, it could be. It, it definitely could so be. And that, that depends on, I don't know. His I, pain tolerance, how effective. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how he feels and, and what it he sucks, can handle. Because I love trace. I, no, he's honestly, a great kid. Oh, He's a great kid. Like one of the nicest, most honest kids I've ever been around. Uh, and, and to see him be a, kind of a shell of himself, but again – fighting through it for for the team when again a lot of dudes would be like you know what i've just got to be drafted at this point i'm i'm, I'm not yeah. going to. but I, I think hopefully nba guys will see that and you know because the one the one knock on trace over the years has been you know he's too soft and and now i think he's showing some of that toughness and fight and and, and will um it'll be I, interesting for him though at the next level of what is his position i don't know he's got to be able I mean, to make shots yeah, but he, he can. Well, but he's got to be able to. He's got to work on it. He's got to get in the gym and be able to make 16, 18 footers. You don't think he's been working on that the last four years? I hope so. 
I hope so. He he's definitely worked. I, I just I think he's a great college player. Yeah. He's an elite athlete, especially when he's healthy. But his skill set, I don't think, translates to what the NBA is looking for at this point. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's hard to it's hard to argue with that right now. And it, I, I've said this too: the Xavier Johnson injury crushed Indiana in yeah. multiple ways. It it crushed him for this year because, again, with him, I, I think you know you got another win or two, and then they're going to lose Jalen Hutchinson because Xavier Johnson. Now his role is increased and he's balling. Yeah, yep. he'll be out after. A year. All right, let's go on to another team that nobody has been talking about, Rob. I, I honestly feel like nobody has been talking about Michigan State. You just saw them uh, last night? Uh, two nights ago. Two nights ago. I can't keep track. The, the days right now uh, get tough. But you saw them beat Wisconsin in Madison. Now, again, without Tyler Wall. So you put a little bit of, a, of an asterisk next to, to that win. But yeah. Michigan State's played without some dudes – for a yeah, while. I mean they've they've been banged up and finally they're healthy, but they've exactly. won seven straight. And, and Tyler Wall not being in that game yep. certainly hurts Big Wisconsin. Um, the Badgers it, it just puts so much on Chucky Hepburn and Stephen Crowell to create. And a season had a really nice first half, but Michigan State, as a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 depends on team members you surround yourself with. That's the most important thing. So that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people with the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. Uh, I've used them before. I've, I've gotten really, really good people because, again, that, that's what it does. It, it fits exactly what you need and really easy. Uh, LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools that go beyond resume data by using insight from your job post, your company, and their 80, uh, 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most, most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications, all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. It's the only place that I would go again uh, to try to hire somebody, find the right candidates and, and, and make the right hires. Um, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash good. That's linkedin.com slash good to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Really pretty much blanketed him, him, him in the second. I, I was impressed with Joey Hauser. You know, he has had a quietly, I would say, the best season of his career. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just been his shooting. I, I want to say coming into that, to that game, at the Cole Center, he was four of his last 18 from three over the prior four games, but was still averaging 10, 10, and four, and four assists. And in years past, if Hauser wasn't shooting well, I'd say just chalk it up. He's not going to play well. Yep. But even though he hasn't shot great, he's still found ways to impact the game on the glass and also making some plays for other people. Um, he was awesome down the stretch. And then A.J. Hogard was too. A.J. Hogard made every play late. Michigan State goes eight for their last eight from the field. Um, they, they they were tough. Hogard made big baskets. Hepburn took a, a forced bad three at the end. Um, just a good road win. A really good road win. Even without Tyler Wall, it was a good crowd at the Cole Center. And uh, Michigan State, I think, is is starting to maybe show that they, they belong in that upper tier of Big Ten teams. I, I think Purdue is in a, a class by itself right now. But I do think that Michigan State is a team that – has the potential to be there, and I, I would put Rutgers right there with him. Well, it's funny because, again, we kind of wrote off Michigan State a little bit early, right? I mean, in Portland, they weren't great, but they were – But they were injured. I mean, injured. they weren't – Really they, injured. Malik Hall is so important to this team, and Jaden Akins is too. Yes, and Akins was hurt in the preseason, then he gets hurt again. I feel like we're not going to get the true Jaden Akins until maybe February. Yeah, probably not. He does. He did say I read where he finally feels a hundred percent. Yeah, 
but I don't think he's playing. He's not playing back to 100%. Tom Izzo said that in the summer, he was their best player. To me, I I think, again, when you look at their their overall sum of their parts, they're good. They're older. They got a bunch of good players. They don't have a star. We know that. They didn't go in the portal, which in one way hurt them. On another way, did not because you returned kind of the same guys. They all know their roles. They've been there. They played with one another. So that's the positive. You know, here's the thing, Rob. Like, while every other seemingly big program has had their bad years and their bad years, look at Villanova right now. They're not going to make the tournament most likely. Uh, Arizona had it years ago after uh, Lute Olson was dealing with some health issues. They went through it right before Sean Miller uh, took over in Tucson. We've seen it at UCLA, obviously. We've seen it at Carolina. We see it right now at Kentucky. Duke struggling a little bit. You know, Duke's been pretty damn consistent over the years. But Michigan State, they've got a 23 straight NCAA tournament throw. I mean, Tom Izzo is like the model of consistency. And the one guy, if you're going to put your money on somebody that's going to figure it out year in and year out, it is Tom Izzo, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's interesting to see this year, they've kind of gotten away from some of their staples. This is the slowest team from an offensive in pace yeah. that they have ever had in the Ken Palm era since 2010, when they really? started keeping track of average possession length, this is the slowest team. Um, they did find some things in transition a couple nights ago, at Wisconsin, but they're, they're not doing that. And then the rebounding they're 209th in offensive rebound mm-hmm. percentage. I mean, when, when I played at Purdue a five man, they don't really have, no, I mean, they, Sissoko, yeah, it's Sissoko so, and yeah, but when I played at Purdue, yeah. The couple days leading up to our games against Michigan State, the only things we did were rebounding drills and transition defense. And the first time I played against Michigan State was my freshman year at home. I, I didn't play in the in the first game we played. I was sick, so I didn't play. And you are so soft. You didn't. No, play that is, that is weak. But I was throwing up all night. Like I, I was don't really care. Was, Your first the game against our event. Michigan State, and you bailed out. Yeah, I did. I couldn't play. Wow. I, I, I don't know. I could not do it. I stayed up all night. I was thrown up. I had a bad temperature. It's honestly as sick as I've I've probably ever been um, in East Lansing. But so I the first time I saw him was the game at Purdue, and I was shocked at how on made shots, Kalen Lucas was bringing this thing right down our backs, even on makes. Yeah, I mean, the way that Yo. they used to push the ball was uh, incredible. Yeah. He'd get out there. Travis Wall would get out there, and these dudes would just push the tempo. And, I mean, if they're running like that on makes, think about what they were doing on misses. The only thing we worked on, transition defense and rebounding. And Matt Painter always said it to us, regardless of how we shoot, if we rebound and hang in there and we keep them out of transition, we will give ourselves a chance to win. And they that's not been them this year, but they've still found ways to be effective. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Izzo's done a pretty good job adapting over the years. You know, yeah. uh, he's still obviously old school as, as a coach and how he runs his program. But in terms of how they play, he's been pretty darn ad- adaptable. No, he he has. And you know where they've been a lot better this year, too? And it, it did rear its ugly head a little bit at, in Madison as they've been much better ter- uh, not turning the basketball over, yeah, taking care of they it. They were awful last year. I mean, there awful. were some times the last couple of seasons where you're like, oh. this is almost impressive to see how bad they are taking care of the ball. Uh, but they shoot it from three. They've taken care of it better. And they've they've got an experienced group. They they could they could win the Big Ten. I think now I think Purdue is the favorite, but if Michigan State won it or got a piece of it, I wouldn't be shocked. All right. The the last thing before we go, uh, I'm gonna throw your name in the hat right now, officially, to replace Kevin Warren as the Big Ten commissioner. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm okay. putting your name in the hat. Rob Hummel, I, I'm I'm starting the 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 campaign right now. Robbie Hummel. For Big Ten commissioner, what do you think? I've got so much experience in football that I think that that's a really good decision. <laughs> now that I've done a year of XM radio doing some football shows yeah. in the fall, I think I am maybe ready for that. I think you're ready. I, I don't I don't see why not. Uh, no, Kevin Warren goes to the Bears. Um, it's funny because Kevin Warren was crucified, absolutely crucified. The football stuff. Yeah. And then – he lands UCLA and USC and everything changes. And, and the percent. media deal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah. it's he's got a very complex legacy, I would say. Um, yeah. You know, the football thing. And I, that's a tough decision. That was what, in July or August? Yeah. And 
COVID really started for us, I would say, in March. I mean, think about when the Ivy League, when the Ivy League canceled their postseason play, I was like, what God, mean? the Ivy League doesn't care about sports. How right. soft. Week later, shut down. They're just smarter than everybody else. And, yep. and that's one of those situations. And it's not like we're talking a year out. There was still a lot of unknowns about COVID-19 yep. and some of the impacts of getting it and then going back on the field. In hindsight, looking back, was it the right decision? Probably not. The SEC played, the ACC played, nothing nothing bad happened. And, and the Big Ten decided, what, in week six that they were going to play too. Um, I, I don't envy the situations he's had to take over. I can understand why he'd want to go to the Bears after three years of this. It probably feels like 33 years of of being the commissioner. Um, but he's a football All guy. Is, here's what I'll say. Big Ten men's basketball coaches are not crying today. Well, they're not. Now, what about we'll see Fran McCaffrey's next. probably not happy. That's his college teammate. I bet he doesn't like <laughs> to see him leave. That's a good point. That's a good point. I, I think it'll depend on who's next, right? A lot of these these leagues have gone outside the box lately, Big 12 and Pac-12. But don't you think there's one man that at least is coming to my mind is, is getting the first call for this? Jim and that's Phillips? the current the current ACC commissioner, Jim yeah, Phillips. Yeah, Jim Phillips was at Northwestern. As good a dude as it gets. But everyone thought he was the front runner for the job the first time around. But why now he's he? got experience. Right. Now he I think he was pretty critical of the Big Ten um how they handled everything. Expansion. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, what else is he gonna say? His league's potentially gonna get decimated by it if they were to start, you know, if the SEC comes for Clemson or the Big Ten came for, for Carolina and split up Carolina and Duke, that would that would crush their league. What's he gonna say? I just I I would be shocked. If he's not on the short list for for people, oh, he'll be on the short list. It, it's just and basketball he, coach would be hyped because he is definitely yes ingrained in the basketball five or whether it's on the the committees for the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, you'd see him everywhere. Yeah, when he was at Northwestern, he was all over the place at basketball games. Yep. All right. Well, listen. Uh, it was it was good doing the pod. I'm glad I got you a Twizzlers deal. These, I mean, Twizzlers are awesome, underrated. The question is, in this care pack, is it going to be straight Twizzlers? Or am I going to benefit and like Hershey's kind of, kisses? Will I be getting all the Hershey stuff? That's TBD. But thanks to Tom. Thank you, you Tom, get, for, for making fun Tom. of me. And Yeah. What about me? I mean, you you started the discussion, but Tom me? drove. I mean, I got Tom this drove, deal done. Tom drove the discussion. So I think if anyone deserves credit for this, it's Tom on Twitter. All right, and Tom, I thank Tom for that. Tom, we're going to give you a... a a cut of, of Rob's NIL deal if he gets one. No, there's no cut for Tom, but there is a shout out for Tom. All I know is I want some some Valentine's Day Hershey's kisses if you get a, a whole. A You'll whole still be down in South Carolina not doing shit. I'm working my ass off here. What are you Jesus. talking about? I'm going out next week. I got a great week. I'm finally going to hit the road. I got, finally uh, going to hit the road. That's a statement. Listen, Where are you going? Kansas, Kansas at Kansas State on Tuesday. Oh, what a tough game to have to go cover. A great game. Great game. I've never been to a game at Kansas State. The Octagon of Doom. It's a good never, spot. Never been there. Then I've got I'm a restaurant do... for you there. They've got some good places in Manhattan. Then I'm going Arkansas, Missouri. And then potentially Indiana, Illinois the next day. Oh, I'll be at Indiana, Illinois. You will? Yeah. You didn't tell me that. I'm doing the game. Yeah, I think I am at least. What date is that? Next Thursday. So it's like uh, oh. from today, the 19th at Illinois. Never mind. Wait, it's uh, – I thought it was – is that is that not on – oh, maybe I'm not there. <laughs> What's two, Tuesday the 24th? Is that Indiana, Illinois? Hold on. I'll look. Hang on. Um, I could have sworn. So Illinois has got – do they have them twice? They have uh, Indiana on the 19th at home, and then they don't play Indiana again until February 18th in Bloomington. Oh, I'm doing the game in Bloomington. I may go to that one. I may go to that one. We'll, we'll see if Indiana is still re nationally relevant by then. That'll be interesting. I don't know. All right. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Hit the uh, – uh, give us any comments you got. Any other deals that maybe Hummel should be working on other than Twizzlers and Hershey's and anything else? I don't know. We we, we got to just try to take care of Hummel here or else he's going to, he's asking for big, big uh, money. I, I did. I did have an, another podcast company approach me and. Uh, you did, did you? Yeah. It was. Right, uh, 
we'll one go. Evan Turner came and asked if I'd be interested. So Let's I should leverage that. That's I bullshit. should leverage this. I, I've been texting with Evan. Yeah, uh, he tried to poach me. Tell but I'm Evan. a loyal guy. I told him no. You but are. I could always open back up negotiations. You know, we go way back to our, our days of being roommates in Serbia. So that... I know you do. I know you do. But I don't think Evan can get you a Twizzlers deal like I did. It's, it's probably it's awesome. All right. We'll see you next week. Thank you.